Uh, my name is Michelle Barker and I'm the Director of the Research Software Alliance and I'm giving a very quick overview today on how to utilize collective impact to achieve open research goals. Because my background is as a sociologist, so I'm always interested in sharing tools on how to understand how to get uh, a community to change. So I'll be sharing a couple of tools with you today that perhaps you will find useful in your, your work. Uh, there's a copy of the slides publicly available and I've pasted that URL into the chat and it's now I think on the Slack as well. Right. Um, to make this a little more interactive, uh, whilst I'm talking about these tools, I'd encourage you to think of an example that you could apply it to. Uh, so maybe you can learn a little and think about how you might do something differently as a result of this talk. So think of uh, some kind of change process that you've been involved with or are currently involved with, and maybe this will give you some insights uh, into how, how, how that worked well last time or how you can improve it this time. Right, this first tool is a very well-known one. It's called the Eight-Step Change Model by John Cotter. It was published in 1996, and you can find heaps of information on it online. And it says, if you're going through any kind of change process, th there are eight steps. This is a linear model in here, although in reality, it's probably not quite that simple. Uh, but it says, begin uh, in the bottom left-hand corner with one of the blue squares, number one, to create urgency. If you want some kind of change in your team, in your organization, in your community, in your sector, uh, maybe even in your home life, you, you need to begin by being able to convince other people of the importance uh, of what you're doing, of the benefits of changing or the negative outcomes if change doesn't happen. Then there needs to be a step where you form a powerful coalition, uh, but don't, don't make the mistake of thinking powerful means people like CEOs <clears throat> who have hierarchical power. Uh, there are many types of power, and in fact, the people who are quite influential, influential in, in your environment uh, can be quite varied, but you need a group of them around you or a group of champions uh, to help move things forward. And you need a, to create a vision so that you can take people with you on the journey and they see where they're going. Uh, Dryad just gave us a great example of a vision and, and then the next step of being able to successfully communicate that. Step five now, we're in the middle of the green squares. I says you need to empower your team or your organization or your community to be able to take forward the idea themselves. So you can't stay in the hand of a, an elite group uh, you need to be able to motivate and enable others uh, to take steps. And then step six says you need to identify some quick wins fairly on in the process to, to encourage people to keep coming on the journey with you to show that success is being achieved uh, and then to move into the red steps of really mainstreaming the change. I'm going to use my own organization as a, a very brief case study. Uh, the Research Software um, Alliance is an, orga is an international organization uh, that aims to make sure research software is recognized and valued as a fundamental and component, a valuable component of research worldwide. Uh, so in terms of the open science tools landscape, uh, we look at the software tools and uh, the software infrastructure and how to promote uh, their advancement. We work across the, the international communities uh, that help advance that, whether it's uh, discipline groups like Elixir in the life sciences or uh, national groups like Canary in Canada or uh, research software communities that focus on a particular issue like careers uh, and the research soft looking at an organization like the uh, uh, Research Software Engineering Society. We're trying to achieve large scale change in the sector in the entire research sector and how uh, software is valued and how the organizations that work to achieve that work together uh, to achieve higher strategic goals. Uh, and we work across three main areas of, of people, policy and infrastructure. So if we looked at one of our current projects, which is called Fair for Research Software, uh, which aims to expand the understanding of how to apply the FAIR principles uh, beyond data to research software. Uh, there's been a bit of work done on that uh, for some in the last uh, 18 months and we've been advancing that. If we look at where we are in terms of making that change within our community, we're probably at the step where we're empowering action and we need to get some quick wins uh, coming out uh, soon to, to keep everyone moving forward. 
But I'd emphasize that uh, once we've got to the end of the red uh, for, th for this part of the project, we'll go back to the beginning uh, for the next part of the project. So you can use this to, uh, to, to, main, to, to frame uh, your two year vision or your two day vision. It can be used at a number of different levels and you keep going back through it. Just to give you a taste of the different model, uh, this is a, a more complex one uh, from the Center for Social Impact. Uh, and on the left hand side in the first column, you can see uh, the, the areas of change are, are broken down into a few different levels. Uh, so for example, for governance and infrastructure, if you go across the row, you can see that there are different phases identified. So you can see where you're at uh, or, and what you need to do next. So for us, the green arrow shows where the research software alliance is generally as an organization. In terms of governance and infrastructure, we're a bit more advanced. Uh, we've launched working groups and selected our backbone organization. Uh, when our fiscally sponsored project of code for science and society. Strategic planning, we're about midway, but you can see in the bottom two rows, uh, the two areas that we probably need to focus on. Uh, so to increase our community engagement and also to look more at evaluation and improvement. So evaluation and improvement is an area that often communities or organizations or teams don't think enough about early on, uh, that it's useful to have some baseline data to communicate the problem but then also to be able to uh, identify uh, how advancements are, are made on that. So that's my short talk, uh, a couple of useful models that might help you frame your thinking. Uh, there's more information available on them on the web and uh, also a brief introduction to the Research Software Alliance and our uh, place in the Open Science Tool ecosystem. So thank you very much. <laughs>